Sports Tonight is back again. We're broadcasting live from Channels TV Sports Center in Lagos, Nigeria. It's such a delight to have you join us to talk sports. I'm Austin Okonakwa. We're fired up on the show tonight because it's just two, two more days to the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Who's been walking with us on this journey? The Super Eagles of Nigeria, and they have landed in Russia, and they did it in style. Everyone talking about uh, the dressing of the team. And of course, they are also fired up to impress at uh, the World Cup. The World Cup will get our attention tonight on the program. I have a former Super Eagles coach in the studio, yes, and a former captain of the Super Eagles. What other way can we talk about the World Cup? So the We'll be doing justice to uh, the World Cup discussion tonight on the program. What's the thing about the Super Eagles of Nigeria? Do you think they can impress in Russia? Uh, this these two persons will assess the team. They will break down analysis. Uh, if you talk about some great coaches that Nigeria have had back in the day, there is no way you will not mention our guest tonight on the program. I won't let him out yet. I will not let him out yet. I want you uh, to be part of everything that I'll be doing tonight on the program. I don't want to talk too much on the show. I just want to hear from you. Two more days to the World Cup. Now you know it's real. The World Cup is upon us. What are your expectations? What do you expect? from coach Gennot Roy and his team now what should they start um, uh, perfecting the strategies is it tactics uh, do you like what happened uh, for uh, the friendly game so much talking points it's the World Cup and you know when it's the Super Eagles of Nigeria then it's big big deal let's let's hear from you tonight on the program talk to us our feedback mechanisms they're still the same on Twitter channels on the score sports Facebook channels I think sports you can also send an email to sports tonight at channels tv.com i want you to be part of the program today because i will be throwing your questions to this former super eagles coach and of course uh, the former captain of the super eagles that will join us later on we want to understand nigerian football at world level because when the world cup kicks off on june the 14th uh it is the best of the best that will be playing so the super eagles must give us something to cheer about talk to us feedback mechanism still the same on twitter channels underscore sports facebook channels i feel sports send us an email yes you can it's sports tonight at channels tv.com it doesn't end there all our top stories can be viewed on our website it's channels tv.com and on youtube uh, for slash channels web if you log on to m.channelstv.com you should be able to download the channels tv app for any of those devices you see right there your ipad your iphone your blackberry your ios your windows phones and your android phones can also do it we want you to uh, keep up with the pace because it's a racy pacey action-packed world of sports so much is going down two more days one, two, and the World Cup is here. 32 of the best football playing nations in the world. They have already assembled in Russia to play football for pride and glory. And I mean, it's serious business. It's a big deal. Nigeria made a debut at a competition at um, 1994 in the United States of America. Back then, we had a team that stunned the world. Everyone was talking about football in Nigeria. Uh, we sustained the momentum in 1996. We went back uh, to the United States of America, Atlanta to be precise, the Olympics back in the day, and Nigeria stunned the world again to win gold. Barfred Joe was the coach that took the team to uh, the Atlanta 1996 Olympics. He's with us in the studio. Let's welcome him. Uh, good to have you on Sports tonight, Barfred. Hi. First, let's begin with, what's the meaning of Bonfrère? Bonfrère is a French-speaking name, and if you translate it from French okay. to Holland, mm. Bo, the first three letters, is good. Good. Frère means in France, brother. <laughs> so if you connect this together, then my name is Good Brother. <laughs> good Brother is with us in the studio uh, tonight. Let's talk about football in Nigeria, and I want you to be part of the discussion, Bonfre. Uh, you've been involved with Nigerian football since 1989, if I'm not wrong. Uh, 1989, you came into Nigerian football. What was football in Nigeria like back then in 1989? It was very difficult for Nigeria. We went for the first time with Nigeria to the African Nations Cup in Algiers. It was very tough and strong playing there because of uh, security reasons. But we play against Algiers, the first game, and we lost that game with 5-1. That was a very big losing. 
and from that moment we have to talk with the players to convince them and prove them up. We bring them up in a tactic way of playing and then they start to play football like we have told them to play and we're going to win. Hmm. And we win one game, we win two games, we win three games and finally we reach the final again, wow. Algiers, hmm. Hmm. home, which we lost by a discutable penalty kick. <laughs> We lost with 1-0. I do, I remember very well. So we improved a lot mm. in one week. And in 1994, you were an assistant coach to the then Clement Vesterhoff. Uh, everyone that watched the team back then said it was a really good team. What was it in, in 1994? We have, in that time, a very good team. They were prepared to, to play. They were... Uh, good understanding with each other, they know how to play with each other, they know the qualities from each other, that's very important. And in that time we play very good game and we scored many goals in our qualification games and uh, stage group. And finally we play against Italy and we were not lucky by scoring some more goals as the only one. Hmm. Finally we lost with 2-1 from Italy. It was very painful. Very painful. Was it due to inexperience? Yeah, you can say it was... We didn't have so much experience as Italy, because there was a very good playing team. And you can tell this, this was the problem, we didn't have good experience. Okay, we can hmm. accept it. How much work was involved in putting together that 1994 team? It was a lot of work to bring all these players together, because many players were playing in Europe and we have also a training camp in Europe. Then we came to Nigeria and then we left to the 1994 World Cup to do a good preparation in the US, which we have done also. That's why we play very good against opening game against Bulgaria. Hmm. We beat them at 3-0. But the game against Italy was the most important game to go more on and this game we have lost. Hmm. It didn't just happen. I it know. Happened. Sometimes. Now, I know. That's football for you. Yeah. You never see where it's going to be, Um That's 1994 team, because arguably that's the best team that has been assembled in Nigeria. That 1994 team, what was the main strength of the team? We have trained them very well in power, in fitness. And when you have a good fitness, you can play very well. Hmm. If you have no fitness, you cannot make a dribble, you can make a run, you can make a, a shooter, you get tired very fast. And when you get tired, your concentration will lose. And concentration is the most important thing in the football. Hmm. Yeah? Not one player can play 45 minutes 100% concentration. Even Messi cannot do that. Yeah? So if you can have a good concentration in your first half from 30, 35 minutes, you have a very good game. And then you have to load up in the halftime, again, your concentration for the second half. But not one player can play 100% 90 minutes concentration. No way. Hmm. What? That's why... Ugh. It happened that some players make mistakes, mm. and that's why you see some goals. I know, I love destruction also with football. Uh, now, still with 1994, what was the style of play then? We play a 4 4 2 system, what many teams play at that time. We have the players to play this, we have convinced the players that we're going to play this, and also we have told the players when he is doing this, you know the quality from this player, and you can support him in this way or this way. So we have told all the players what they can do when one player has the ball, or when he must do defending, or when he must run free in the space. God bless his soul. Tell me, how much of a talent was Rashidi Yekini? He was a very great uh, player. He was hungry to score goals. And when a striker is hungry to score goals, same as Daniel Mokachi, he's always hungry to score goals. You have a very good striker. Hmm. Daniel Mokachi, Rashidi Yekini. On the left, Emmanuel Monique, on the right, Fini the George. And sometimes you have Samson Siasia coming in into that mix. That was arguably the most dangerous forward lineup in the world. Yeah, because we have players, they have all speed, they have all technique, <laughs> and they fight all together. And that makes them very dangerous. Every player who has the ball, 
could make a dribble, could beat the defender from the opponent. And when you can beat the opponent from your opponent, you have always one player more in the next line. It mm. starts already with your defense line. Mm. When you bring the ball over the attackers from the opponent, you have one man more in the midfield. Can you bring the ball as midfield player over your player from the midfield? You have one more and more in the attack. Mm. And that is what you have to teach your players if you can win one against one. And we have players in that team who can do it. Amanika could do it, Amakasha could do it, Rashid mm. Katina could do it, Samson could do it, Vinicius George could do it. And they could also give a good cross pass. Yeah. So that was a very dangerous attack. And they can hurt any defense. It was just three of them against Argentina. Yes, Nigeria lost 2-1, but I remember so clearly, just three of them, they broke down five-man Argentine defense. Rashidi Yakini, Daniel Amokachi, and Samson Siasia. Yeah, like I mentioned already, we have the qualities to do that. And you have to convince the player, even when he thinks, coach, this defender is very strong. I tell them, you can win from him. Go use your qualities. You have your quality to go on the right side, you have the quality on the left side, which I know from the player. Mm. So I convince him that he can do it left or right, or even with a combination with the other one who's coming support him. Mm. This is what you have to tell your players. Make them stronger and let them believe in their qualities. And, uh, we have Bonfra Joe, our former coach of the Super Eagles, in the studio with us. And I want you to be part of the program. Talk to us on Twitter channels, on sports, Facebook channels. I've been so having fun going back in the day of what football was like in Nigeria. So I, I want to hear from you. If you also have questions for the coach, keep them coming. That's it right there. Twitter channels, on sports, Facebook channels, I've been so uh, Bonfra, we love the 1994 story, but 1996 was sweeter. Tell me what happened in Atlanta. Uh, in Atlanta, we have a very good team, young team with three overage players, but that was a lot. Everybody have this, and we play very good attacking football, which we also have trained in our preparation game. We have trained them 100% physically power. That's what I have done some weeks before the opening is a game from us. But the last 10 days, we did only tactical way of playing with them to give them trust on the ball, to give them confidence on the ball, and let them play one-two combination, playing the ball in front, don't play the ball back. If you see one player in front is free, pass him the ball, support him, other one player also, and this bring you in front, and we have chance to score goals. I know. Against Brazil, was it luck or strategy that won that match? I think uh, the first half, we make the mistake, so Brazil can score three goals. We have made that mistake by ourselves. And that's why I say in halftime, we're going to win this game. And Brazil has scored only three goals by luck. Hmm. So in the last 20 minutes, I changed the strategy. We play with four midfield players, one more. Oruma Wilson was going to the midfield. I take the right defender out. So um, Babangida. Mm. And Fatusi must stop uh, the left defend, left attacker, left defender from Brazil, mm -hmm. so we can go and keep on in the attack. So it was not luck, okay. even when I say it now, and at that time I believe it also, mm. if the game was not by the golden goal, and we have to play 20 minutes longer, <laughs> I tell you and I guarantee that we have scored more goals, because... Brazil was completely dead, <laughs> and we have the power to go on. So you've heard it. Uh, that argument went on for a very long time that it was luck that, uh, that this, uh, the Nigerian team used in beating Brazil at the 1996 Atlanta. No, Bonfred just says no. Uh, and if that game had gone for that, they would, they would still get more goals. Plus tonight on Channel's television, let's go on this break. When we come back, why does Bonfred love Nigerian football so much? He's here. He will tell us. Don't go anywhere. Hey.